Happy Friday, Rebels, and I am back. And today I'm talking about, well, a couple of things actually fighting the fatigue and also talking about cold uh, flashes as well. So, fighting the fatigue. I wonder if it feels like to you like you've been hit by a freight train that one minute your energy levels appear to be up. Uh, and then next minute there's a sudden dip and I quite often describe that for me as my coat hanger fatigue almost like I've been sort of stretched out on a coat hanger and then hung on a sort of a high uh, doorknob of a, of a wardrobe and actually fatigue is a common symptom of perimenopause and menopause and yes it is down to our hormone um, imbalance but I think Certainly as I've experienced, fatigue is more about just being tired. Um, it reminds me uh, of the example of like being zapped of all energy by like a, a stun gun. Um, and there's no kind of no reason for it. You know, one minute, um, as I like to say, um, the lights are on um, and there's clarity. Um, and then the sort of shutters come down and maybe they come on again and actually no amount of going to sleep and getting a good night's sleep seems to sort of do the trick. So uh, it feels like you'll sort of get up and go very quickly, um, uh, just disappear. You know, it, it, it's got up and gone and left us. So this wave of exhaustion, exhaustion um, is all about um, our estrogen levels hitting rock bottom. Um, so it is all about those hormone fluctuations, um, very similar to those that we experience with poor sleep, insomnia and night sweats. Um, and actually it's a symptom that we first notice during perimenopause and continues through to menopause. So I've often thought, and I'm sure you do, is just how long is this um, coat hanger fatigue going to, to last? Now. I did some research and actually the consensus from experts is that it seems to be two to three years um, but as I've experienced you're likely to find it kind of it comes and it goes um, and as I said it's a problem that we first notice um, in our sort of perimenopause stage so it is with the fatigue a case of lifestyle and here are some quick tips around lifestyle changes so the first one for me is about chatting to your doctor, chatting to your GP, um, again going along with your list of perimenopause symptoms and fatigue can be one of them. But it's also helpful to go along just to rule out any other possible causes of that fatigue. Now it could be, um, and this is not exhaustive, it could be to do with diabetes, thyroid issues, maybe liver disease, so go and check that out. The other thing that I've been working on and I'm still working on is my sleep routine. So that's about um, trying to have a bedroom, a, a, a night routine where you go to bed at the same time, you wake up in the morning at the same time that you set your alarm, to think about some tech detoxing as I call it, so maybe a couple of hours before you go to bed making sure that laptops are switched off, you know your phone is on silent, you're not going to be distracted by social, social media, um, and some simple things like maybe putting, uh, taking valerium or putting sort of lavender, um, uh, on your pillow um, just to help you to, to relax and go to sleep or something I've got into now is sort of herbal teas as well particularly sort of nighttime teas that can help you um, get off um, to sleep. Um, there's something also about saying no and it's a hard one isn't it because we've got lots of competing interests and priorities family, kids, husbands, you know partners, uh, wives in terms of just saying no and putting some boundaries in place, it's that old adage, you know, you've got to put your self-care first, put that oxygen mask on first before you can really support um, other people. So making that time for some time out, um, whether it's, you know, um, uh, meditation, um, listening to some relaxing music, whatever works for you, and also making sure that we don't take on um, too much. And then there's that, you know, moving, movement and exercise. Um, I know and I felt it, it might feel counterintuitive that the last thing you want to do is to get up and move around, maybe dance around the room when really what you want to do is to put your PJs on, kick back your heels and, and have a glass of wine. But sometimes just getting those endorphins going, doing a little bit of exercise and movement can, can really, really help. 
The other one, um, and I'm getting into this more and more, is drinking lots of water and keeping yourself hydrated. Now, we love our glass of wine, but wine is a diuretic, um, so it makes you want to, to pee more, and this in turn can cause dehydration and it can lead to fatigue. Um, so yes, the booze does disrupt our sleep, um, so it's probably best if we can, if we can, go to turtle and we can stay away from it as much as possible. Um, now, if you are struggling to take on a water, you know, get yourself a couple of litre, I would suggest a glass bottle because of the nasties in the plastics and have that by your desk or when you're on the go just to make sure that you're taking on enough water. And then if you can, dare I say it, letting go of the sugar and the caffeine, I know it's a, a tricky one and it's the one thing or the two things we want to reach for when we're really feeling cream um, crackered and we just want to sort of demolish that sort of um, the biscuit tin um, as well as taking on the, the coffee that's so strong you can probably sort of put your put your spoon in it and it would sort of stand up on itself so if we can think about the caffeine and the sort of sweet stuff yes it does give us that quick fix but it does play havoc with our blood sugar levels and can end um, up sort of feeling um, low par and worse than before so it's thinking about how we can swap those sugary snacks um, for potassium rich foods like bananas and we can think about slow relief carbs such as rice and quinoa so then I want to quickly move on to the chills so when we find ourselves when we're switching before switching between wanting to put on lots of layers and sort of hide under the duvet and then next minute you know we're having that hot flush and again it's the hormones our body's packed full of hormones that have all gone a bit wonky and they've gone a bit haywire um, and actually uh, it is um, our estrogen levels again um, depleting depleting our body so the cold flash is the reverse of a hot flush, um, if you like. And again, it comes about because our estrogen uh, levels begin to drip, uh, to drop, sorry. And the hypothalamus, um, the part of our brain responsible for our body's uh, thermostat, it starts, if you like, to have a funny, funny turn. So they do pass quite quickly. I've experienced uh, cold flashes. They can last up to, to 20 minutes. Um, and you may notice them more during the night when our, sort of our temperature drops and our body um, cools down. And again, these sort of chilly chapters, if you like, begin to start in our, our perimenopause years. So what can we do? So when our sort of thermostat is, is all over the place, so yes, it could be, again, the alcohol, the caffeine, maybe smoking and spicy uh, foods, but when your body, body is really sort of trying to deal with these menopause symptoms, these can be the common culprits too, which forces it to our bodies to work even, even harder. So see if you can try to eliminate those things that I've mentioned, um, slowly but surely, and one by one to see if it makes a difference. I'm talking about cutting out or um, reducing the alcohol um, and the caffeine, particularly before bed, and those ciggies as well, and also the spicy foods. So maybe not going for the the, the curry that's going to blow your head off, but something um, a little bit um, a less spicy. Um, other things I'm thinking about is de-stressing yourself, I mentioned it before, the, the mindfulness, the meditation, so that you can recharge. Um, I always in my coaching work talk about it as being what's going to be your daily non-negotiable, how are you going to be kind to yourself, how are you going to set aside that pocket of time just to rest and recuperate. Um, with those cold flashes, maybe think about you know wearing layers, so you can put things on as quickly as you can take things off um, if you're having um, a, a hot flush. And that actually does help with the cold flashes as well if you jiggle about a bit and maybe move and, and dance too. And also, and I've done it, I like wearing socks in bed, then invest in a good pair of warm socks too. And finally, the other piece to add is that you may want to consider HRT in the mix too. So thank you for listening today. I will be back now on Monday. So I've done the letter F. So I'll be uh, on to the letter G on Monday. Thank you for listening and have a good Friday. Bye for now.